Hey, I'll see you and talk to you whenever. <laughs> I told you to play along. All right. Now the manufacturer said to Ages 14 and up, one packet daily, empty contents into a glass and add four to six ounces of water and then stir. Okay. Literally, 
at Devin's all um, event, I was just like, ooh, Jesus, okay, here we are. All right, I, I'm sorry, forgive me, but I don't trust you, right? Like, it is what it is. I don't trust you, Jesus. Like, you're not my friend right now. We're going to get into it. Um, so, yes, right? And then, haha, uh -huh, Pastor Kenny asked me to pray. Okay, I prayed. But then, little did I know, Jesus was definitely in this place. The Holy Spirit was definitely here. I don't know. But Penny's mama, was Danielle, had the word. Um, I prayed over Micah and Jason, and I prayed over all of us talking about us being seeds. Oh, my God. I can talk about that week, too. Um, that following week, right? Or that, that Sunday. Um, again, I keep bringing it back. Again, I'm doing all of this, but in the back of my mind, I don't trust you. <laughs> um, so it's just like, yeah, it's easy for me to pray for other people. Sure, not a problem. You need me to stand in agreement with you for your healing? Sis, I got you. You need some gas money? Here you go. Let me put this seed into your life. You need a cheerleading squad? Hip, hip, hooray, my friend. I'm right there for you. But when it comes to me, myself, and I, Jesus, I do not trust you. One more time, sorry. <laughs> Pastor Kenny comes and he says, Victoria, stop playing around. Get ready, because you're going to get this word next week. Pause, I'm not going to be here next week. I don't, I don't, can't do it. Uh, <laughs> so he was like, that's why I got you too. Aha, next week, that following week. Great, fine. Okay, Jesus, I've accepted the fact that I don't trust you. Now my pastor's telling me that you want me to give the word. Sure. Fine. Great. Now, Lord, give me the word. So this is, <laughs> this is fun. Sorry. So this is the part where things kind of get tricky or complicated, kind of, sort of, because during this time, um, in those two weeks, I for real sought the Lord, but I haven't like I wasn't necessarily given a word to speak. Um, let me explain. So normally, um, no, there's no normally. I'm blessed to have the opportunity to lead the children's ministry um, every third uh, Sunday. So come back on the third Sunday. We we'll love to hang out and kick it with them. Um, and so one thing that irks me. But I understand why he does it. Um, he does it. Pastor does not give me a topic, right, to like talk about. So I'm just like, oh Lord, what are we gonna talk about? But normally, I hear something like, okay, we're we're talking about this this week, and oh, we're gonna talk about this this week, and oh, we're gonna talk about this. And Granny only did three times now, so I can only go this week, this week, this week. Um, right. So I normally have that word, and so then I'm able to. Um, prep and plan and pray and read and listen and worship like you know I, I can get into the the act of doing what it is that I'm supposed to be doing um, a wise man a great musician he has been in um, um, it, whatever I'm gonna let that go he said even though you're anointed and you're gifted you're or you're calling doesn't go away when you're in like a little funky like state or situation or whatever the case may be like you're still gifted you're still called to do this so whenever it's time for you to step up and do whatever it is that you're supposed to do god is still going to be with you and provide the resources and stuff like that for you to be a blessing to others so i was just like oh my god you're so right you're so totally right, sir. Thank you for saying that. Because again, I'm in the space, the space where I don't trust you, Jesus. Like, nah. Okay. Anywho, anywho, anywho. So coming back to today, if I'm rambling, bring me back. Okay, like okay. Um, so coming back today, so God really didn't give me a word, basically, and I'm just like, you gotta be kidding me. Any other time you have something to say? Not 
today, crickets. So I was invited, um, Pastor Shaquan, excuse me, invited me to join in on a call on Thursday, and um, of, like two few weeks, a few days ago. And um, does she go by Apostle or Apostle? Apostle Maisha um, had testimony service, right? Okay, y'all, that's new to me. Um, knowing my background and where <laughs> the 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 kind of church that I attended to and grew grew up in, what we come up and tell everybody our whole life story in front of it and all, we good. Um, so, but low key, we're laughing now, but this is what I'm doing today. Blah. Okay. Um, side note, I'm very sarcastic, um, so please don't take me too serious. Um, so yeah, so um, let me just tell you part of my story. Um, again, hi, I'm Victoria, nice to meet you. Okay, cool. Um, I was called, right? I know that I, I'm called into the ministry. Um, I can give you the year um, 2013. That's when the Holy Spirit was just like, you're called into the ministry. And at this time, I was, when I tell you on fire, I was on fire because in 2008, I was just like, bye Jesus, I don't want nothing to do with you, Jesus. Like you get on my nerves, Jesus. Like if I don't follow you, then the devil won't mess with me. And then like my surround. <laughs> And then, like, my surroundings, those who claim to be Christians weren't living the Christian lifestyle. And it's just like, pause. You over here saying X, Y, Z, doing one, two, three, but you yourself ain't doing. You, you just as worse as me, basically. That's what I'm getting at, right? And I'm pretty sure we all, we all know one or two of those people. So I was done. I was through. But I literally had my come to Jesus moment. And it was literally me and Jesus. So going back to what Devin had mentioned earlier, talking about relationship. Right? Okay, cool. So now... Okay, so now, 2013, me and Jesus were tight, right? Like, I know scriptures, I know, I know the formula on how to have devotionals. I, in my old church, we called it quiet time. Um, <laughs> okay, I hope y'all are kind of catching on to, like, my background. Uh, <laughs> um... So we, we, you know what I'm saying? Like my old church, and I'm forever grateful for them because they, they had me stand on a solid foundation and yes, and speaking the word, right? Like word, read, this word has power. This word is truth, right? Yeah. All that good stuff. Okay, going back to 2013, that is definitely when I'm called. And, it, and so I was just like, yippee! I get to be in front of people and I get to tell people about Jesus and I get to do this and yes, everybody's going to love me. No, not everybody loved me. And also during that time, I was seeking approval, right? So in the mix of, yes, spending time with the word, with God, I was also like shucking and jiving for like other people the higher ups um, so they can be pleased with the works that I'm doing for the church. So my intentions were good, but my motives were bad. Did I say that correctly? I hope y'all are catching that. Um, so all in all, after after a while, y'all, um, you get burnt out because like you're not being genuine <laughs> for what it is that you want to do. So 20... 2016, um, I fell off again, and in this time, I, uh, and this is true, y'all, for real, for real, I unintentionally dabbled into witchcraft, and I say unintentionally because the people that I was around during that time, 
they introduced me into like the rocks and the crystals and the sage and the universe, right? Like in my mind, <laughs> I'm just like, oh, oh, you gonna hold a rock for energy? Sure, like I'm stressed. Let me hold this rock real quick. Not feeling the daggone thing, but well, that's neither here nor there, whatever. But whenever you take your gifting, your calling, right, for granted, then you just slowly, what well, Devin mentioned, you just slowly drift away. Like, you get tired and all that kind of stuff. Again, 2016, I'm just like, I'm done with you, Jesus. Because you said this, you said this, you said this, and nothing came to pass. And I did this, I did this, I fasted for three days with, with just water, like, you know, like, you, then I just like, uh, 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 right? Okay, I hope I'm co making some type of connection here. Okay, anywho, so I was just like, I'm done. I'm just done. So let's fast forward two years from that, 2018. I don't know what happened, but I'm kind of glad that it did happen. Um, my behind um, he, uh, got back into the church. Like, I was always there, but I was just like a bump on the log. Like, this is stupid. These songs are way too long. If they're too wordy. Like, how am I supposed to ever just... Oh, my gosh. These lights are not even necessary. Like, I was literally that person that was just complaining about everything. Uh, why? Because I was salty. Because I was hurt. Um... Yeah, like, no, no, okay. I still love my, what is it, CCH? CCM. Oh, uh, CCM worship songs. <laughs> uh, see, I hope y'all are catching on where I'm coming from. Uh, my CCM worship songs, because for real, it's the lyrics for me. Um, that, for, yes, that really gives me just like, okay, Jesus, yes, they, they are singing how I'm feeling. I digress. Um, but I wasn't like, what am I trying to say? So 2018, I'm back, but I'm still like, man, this is like, this is dumb, this is stupid. Okay. Um, 2019, I don't know what happened. K-Ron texted me in my ear. Good stuff, though. I just don't remember. 2020, what happened, y'all? 2020? Pandemic. I, I came here, right? I transitioned. Um, here in this 2021. Um, so me coming back, oh, what also helped me come back into like the church and just like, believe it or not, reading the book, The Shack. I don't know if you heard of it or I could never watch the movie. I always fall asleep on it. So <laughs> it was reading the book for me um, because the gentleman, he realized that it doesn't take the the smoky the, the smoke and it doesn't take uh like the cool fancy lights it's literally about the relationship yeah. Yeah. um with god right and so that's that was my journey or this that's the journey that i'm on still today um but now just being pushed to do other things <laughs> new season, new season, new season. Um, so yeah, so it's just like um, in this journey, I realized and I learned like, holy crap, I can be mad or or I can be sad or I actually can like you know because not knocking them, whatever and maybe how I interpret it, right? But like, how you feeling today, sister? Oh, I'm just blessed and highly favored. This is the new day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah. Check, check, check. Even though, like, I'm literally in hell. Like, my body hurts. My head hurts. Like, this person over here is getting on my nerves. Money's running low. Like, I really couldn't tell people at that time how I was feeling. Um... So, yes, two weeks, what knows, three, two weeks, three weeks. Three weeks. Uh, three weeks. Three weeks ago, got slapped in the face with reality in the sense of, you still mad at me. That's why you can't trust me. Um, 
<laughs> I need you to let it go. It's not that easy, Jesus. It's not that easy. So going back to what Devin has said, um, we are told what to do, and I think that this is my gifting in a sense, because I'm definitely a teacher. I'm just naturally like going to teach you and make sure you understand the concepts of what it, it is, <laughs> of what it is um, that people are talking about so you're not feeling left out. That's overall my whole thing. Um, yeah, so it's just like, but how do I do this? How in heaven's name do I forgive you, God? You're God, like how do I forgive God, right? Well, I had to, for real, seek wisdom. Um, I had to te text my spiritual mother um, and I literally asked her, I was just like, yo, this is where I'm at. I hope you're doing well, but this is where I'm at and I need some <laughs> advice, right? Like, sorry, I'm being selfish. I'm not gonna ask them five questions before I could actually ask you um, what it is that I need. Um, and she said, literally, you take it one day at a time. Um, you talk to him about your disappointments. You talk to him about your distrust. Um, you ask him to heal your heart. You ask him uh, to give you um, his perspective his perspective on your disappointment. Ugh. And then you stay faithful. You, it's like, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. And, <laughs> and then she said, repeat these steps as many times necessary. He will work with you based on your personal position. I know he didn't need to come up here and teach today, y'all. I really didn't. Um, Cause better you already like said all my stuff though. Yeah. You're right, yeah. you're right, you're right. And then all she left, especially with Tasha and being meek. Um, ooh. That doesn't sound so good, right? When I'm sniffing. <laughs> okay. You just sorry. Okay, so going back to 28, no, 2019, I um, just happened to find this YouTube sermon by. Uh, know his name but he's the son of John Piper yeah. mm -hmm. um, his son and he basically uh, did a message about um, <laughs> he's a theologian and see I, I don't even go that way but whatever it's okay he's good desiring God yeah, yeah he is good though <laughs> it's okay it's all right. That's why we're all here in this lovely melting pot. I'm here to expose you. Yeah. You're here to expose me. Yeah. Um, anyway, so his son, I, I, I'm sorry, and I was just looking at the sermon last night. But he gave a sermon on um, this scripture, which is Mark 9, 24. Immediately the father of the child cried out, and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help me with my unbelief. Okay, so let me give you. I'm going to clean this mic. I apologize. So I'm going to give you kind of like a background story to which leads up to that um, scripture. So this story um, in the Bible. Kitties, I know this is long, but hear me when I tell you, read your Bible. It's better than On My Block. It is better than, what are some other TV shows? All American, The Crown. It's better than Fortnite. I promise you it is. I promise you it is. And then the closer that you, the more time you spend with God, you kind of read the story in a way that is just like, this person Fill in the blank. <laughs> like how you normally be talking with your friends. This person just done. Da -da 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 -da. Like, I promise you, when you start reading it for yourself. Anyways, so in Mark 9, 14 through 29, I'm just going to sum it up. Um, 
It's about a father wanting his son to be healed from these demonic spirits. And so um, the father went to Jesus' disciples and, and was just like, hey, I need you to pray over my child. He's like filled with uh, these demons. Can you get him out? And the gag is they couldn't get him out. And so, uh, which is really unfortunate. And so one day Jesus was going through the city and he found the father uh, just ran upon Jesus and was just like, yo, God, this is what's happening. I need your help. If, uh, that keyword, if you can heal my son. And so going to verse 22, so Mark 9, 22. No. Where do I want to go? And after he's on the body, the Okay, yes, 22, this is where the father is explaining uh, the situation um, to Jesus. And often he's thrown him, uh, thrown him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on, um, on us and help us. Jesus was such, Peter was a thug, but Jesus was a savage. Okay, um, and this is why I say this. Jesus said to him, if, if you can believe, all things are possible uh, to him who believes, right? <laughs> Um, immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help with my unbelief. So this father is crying out and he was like, Lord, I want to trust you. What has happened in the past, um, it wasn't successful. Like I knew to go to these people and I knew to do X, Y, Z and I wasn't successful. It wasn't successful. My son is still dealing with these demons. Lord, I, I believe. Now help me with my unbelief. Like, prove to me, kind of, in a sense of, like, you are capable of doing this. Um, so, <laughs> let's keep going. Uh, verse 25, he says, um, when Jesus saw that people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter no more. And then, um, praise God, the people celebrated um, moving on. But then what was so cool or what was so dope, um, his disciples was just like, Jesus, how are you able to do this? And then his words, because it's in red, so I'm going to read it correctly. Um, his words, he said, this can, or this kind, can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Yes. Oh the sacrifice part. Like, we were going to have to give up <laughs> something um, in order for us to uh, tap in, right? And to be able to deliver um, other people. But I'm going to say this. In order for you to overcome, right, your unbelief, you're just going to have to, you're just going to have to pray. Um, period. Um, and then last night, because again, y'all, I was really struggling. I was really trying to hear a word from the Lord. Um, and the only thing that he, he told me was Deuteronomy 30, 19. And that says, that scripture says, um, I call heaven and earth as witness today against you that I have set before you life and death blessing and cursing. Therefore, this is your answer for real on how to overcome Victoria um, unbelief, right? Therefore, choose life. Choose it. Period. So that's where the, the choice comes from. So we talked about the chest, and now we hopping on over to the choice. Choose life. Now he's putting, putting it back on you, right? Like, if you really want to overcome this, if this is something that you really want to do, you're going to have to choose life. Yes. It's going to be hard. Yeah. It's going to hurt. Again, choose life. And then I just quickly, because y'all, I'm really talking to myself. Um, I, unfortunately, I don't know how to end this. 
So I'm gonna end it. I'm gonna end it with this reminder. Um, in choosing life, uh, remind yourself: take it one day at a time. Talk to him about your disappointments. Talk to him about your distrust. Ask him to heal your heart. Ask him to give you his perspective of your disobedience. Um, what's the scripture? It's in Psalms. Reveal to me the... Uh, search me, O oh God. Yeah, thank you. Search me, O oh God, and uh, search my heart. Boom, that part. Um, and stay faithful. Repeat the steps as many times necessary. Um, he will work with you based on your personal position. Choose life. So as we are walking into our new seasons, right? And as we are encouraged to be me, choose life. Be honest with yourself. Because listen, um, I guess I'm going to say it. Um, if you were to join an alcohol um, anonymous meeting, an AA meeting, literally the first step to anything is yes, to admit that you have a problem. <laughs> like, literally, like you have to admit it. Because until you can do that, then you're just wasting time. Which sucks because going back to the end of Deuteronomy 19, it says choose life for you and your family. I paraphrase, that's a Victorian version, but please make sure you read the Bible for yourself. But yes, yes, because if you don't choose life for yourself, your, your descendants yes. won't be able to be blessed. The people that you're connected to won't be able to be blessed because we haven't spent time in our devotion. <laughs> and so we're just like, uh, uh, uh. okay. Uh, be blessed, beautiful people. Choose life. And it's okay to be in a position of distrust, but you don't stay there for long, though. Victoria. Am I supposed to pray? Pray is up? Okay, great. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, y'all. Amen. Thank God for back, lady. I mean, <laughs> I mean oh, thank God. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, sorry. And another thing, part of my part of my testimony was um, I had a vision on how things were supposed to go, and so I saw a sermon um, talking about unfollow your heart. Oh my God! When I heard it, I just literally like cried because it's just like, but my ideas are so great. You gave me these desires. Like what? Um, and one thing that the lady mentioned, um, she said that she kind of doesn't like the, the term, I am enough, because low-key, we're not enough. Um, God didn't create us to be whole. He, like, there's a little space in there for him. Um, so you have to acknowledge the fact that you're not enough. You can't do it by yourself. Um, okay, for real, done. Bye.